In this video, I'm going to be doing an iPage website builder tutorial, going over how to build a website in iPage step by step from start to finish. I'll be going over every aspect of the iPage website builder, even going over how to do the SEO setup of the pages you create to your setup for success in your website creation journey. By the end of this iPage website builder tutorial, you'll know how to create and build your website with iPage quick and easy. I'll also be providing you with an iPage web hosting discount that would get you up to 75% off iPage hosting plus a free domain name. Let's get started with the iPage website builder tutorial on how to build a website in iPage. The first thing you want to do to get started in building your website with the iPage website builder is to click the link in the description below so you can be taken to iPage so you can take advantage of getting up to 75% off plus a free domain name. A little disclosure, the link is an affiliate link meaning I receive a commission from iPage at no extra cost to you. Plus you'll get an awesome iPage discount. Once you click the link in the description below, you'll be on the iPage homepage. Click the get started button. You'll now be on the domain page where you can choose a free domain name. You'll see over to the right under your cart section, the save 75%. You'll see three years being selected. Click this and you can also choose a two year term or a one year term. You'll get the greatest discount with a three-year term. You'll get iPage hosting for $1.99 a month. If you go with a two-year term, you'll get hosting for $2.49 a month. If you choose the one-year term, you'll get iPage web hosting for $2.99 a month. Choose a term you'd like to go with. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose the 12-month term. Now let's choose a free domain name. If you already have a domain name, you can just enter in the search field to continue with the domain you already have registered somewhere else. Once you type in a domain name that you want for free, you'll be on a page saying if it is available or not. Under the domain section, you'll see add domain privacy plus protection being selected. This is an extra add-on that is completely optional. I highly recommend going with the domain privacy as this will protect your personal information from the public and can protect you from getting lots of spam and telemarketers reaching out to you via email and phone to sell you their services. When a domain name is registered, it is required, regardless of the company you go with, that your personal information be included in the public who is database. By choosing domain privacy plus protection, instead of your information showing, it'll show iPages information protecting you. Over to the right under the Your Cart section, you will now see the free domain name showing and the domain privacy plus protection if you decide to choose this. Click the Continue to Add-ons button. We will now be on the iPage add-ons page where you can select any add-ons you'd like to go with. All these add-ons are completely optional and you can even add these at a later time in the iPage dashboard. You'll get a cheaper price for them now if you get them when you initially buy your iPage web hosting. So just something to keep in mind. The first add-on is Website Backup and Restore. This can be a good add-on to have as it'll back up your site daily so that if you mess something up by accident or your site gets hacked or anything takes place, you can simply restore your site with a click of a button from the previous backup or a backup of your choosing. You'll notice this add-on is added to the cart by default. You can click the X button if you don't want to include this add-on. The next add-on is SiteLock. SiteLock protects your site from malicious attacks and hackers and from getting malware on your site. You'll receive daily malware scans Blacklist monitoring, which ensures your site doesn't get blacklisted by the search engines if your site does have a virus. It'll block automated bot attacks. It includes automatic malware removal. Site lock can be good as it'll protect your site and if something does happen where it gets hacked, you won't be left trying to fix and find the malware. You'll notice this add-on is added by default. You can click the X button and remove this add-on if you don't want it. The next add-on is Google Workspace. With this add-on, you'll get access to an email address ending in the domain name that you went with. Along with that, you'll also get access to their storage, calendars, video meetings, and more business solutions. Google Workspace runs as low as $6 a month. Your iPage hosting account will come with a free email address ending in your domain name, so unless you really want the Google Workspace features, I don't recommend this add-on. Next, click the Continue to Billing button over on the right. You'll now be on the billing and payment information page. You want to enter your billing information and then enter your payment information. You can also make a payment via PayPal if you'd prefer. Click the buy now button. You've now successfully purchased iPage web hosting. 
iPage will now email you your receipt along with login details so you can log into the iPage dashboard and you can continue in creating your site with the iPage website builder. Once logged into iPage, you'll be on this page here. You'll see the domain name you registered for free. Click manage and you'll be taken to the iPage summary page. We now want to set up and create our website with the iPage website builder. Over in the left menu, you'll see website builder. Click this. The website builder page will pop up. Click the view plans button. Click the create website button under the starter plan as this is included with your iPage web hosting purchase. iPage will now begin setting up your website builder plan. Once it is done, click the manage site tab. You'll now be on this page where you'll put what your site is about. You can select from one of the options or type in a keyword. For example, I'll type in food. It'll pull up lots of choices related to food that you can select. If you want a blog section to be included with your site, you can select I want a blog. Click the continue button to proceed to the next step. It'll now pull up a website template over to the right. On the left, you'll see topic. You can choose a topic for your site. This helps the iPage website builder to create a site related to what your site is going to be about. If I type in food here, it'll have a bunch of choices. I'll select food and you'll see it'll change over to the right. Another example is I'll type in real estate and you'll see it will change. I do want to mention you can change the image and how the website looks once in the iPage website builder dashboard, so don't worry too much about this now. I'll choose food. Next, you'll want to name your site. It's the name of your business. For this tutorial, I'll just put my food shop. You can always change this at a later time within the iPage website builder dashboard. Next, you'll want to choose a cover image for your website. You can click to upload an image from your computer or just drag an image from your computer in. I'll drag an image as an example. You'll see it'll change the cover image for your site. The image website builder will also give you choices of free stock photos you can use for your site. If you click one, it'll change the cover image. You can click shuffle photos to have it pull up new choices for images to choose from. You can keep shuffling till you find something you like. Feel free to skip this step by clicking continue if you aren't sure on a cover image as you can do this within the iPage website builder. You now want to add your logo. You can drag your logo in or click to upload it from your computer. I'll drag in the logo on my computer. It'll now show up in the logo area. If you like the text showing as a logo or don't have a logo made, you can also click skip this step and click continue. You can upload your logo within the iPage website builder dashboard. Next, you want to pick out a font for your site. Click the continue button. You can now pick out colors for your brand. Click the continue button when you have your color picked out. Next, you want to choose the layout of your menu. By clicking each one, it'll give you options. Once you find one you like, click the continue button. Next, if you want to have contact information for your business, you can put it in here. This will also set up contact forms on your site and Google Maps on your site. If you don't want your contact information on your site, or you want to do it within the iPage website builder dashboard, you can skip this step and click the finish button. You're now in the iPage website builder where you can start building and creating your site. To make changes to a text, you can click on it and then you can type in whatever you'd like. I'm going to type in my food shop website. If you want to change the cover image for your site, click in the area of the cover image. You'll see cover image in the top right of the page that lets you know you've selected the cover image. You'll see background. Click this. You'll see your cover image being shown. Click the replace button under it. It'll now pull up the image library where any images you uploaded to your site will show. You can choose search stock photos or upload image. I'll cover both. Click on upload image. You can then drag an image from your computer in or click select a photo to upload it from your computer. Click the back arrow. If you click search stock photos, it'll pull up 
copyright free images that you can use for your site. You can search based on keywords to pull up images related to that. I'm going to choose a random image just to show you. Click use image. It will now replace the image. Anytime you want to preview changes you've made to your site, click the preview button at the top and you can now preview your site like it will show live on the web. You'll see the desktop and mobile phone icon at the top. You can view your site as it will show on a desktop and mobile phone. If you want to publish your changes so they go live on your site, click the publish button at the top. If you want to go back to the iPage Website Builder Editor, click the Edit button. Now I want to show you how to add a new section to your site. Scroll down till you see the plus icon, hover over it, and click Add Section. It'll now pull up tons of different website section templates you can add on the side. If I scroll down and click Text, it'll pull up text templates I can work off of. To add the section to your site, click the template you'd like to go with. I'll click this one. It'll now add that section to your website. You can then click the area to begin editing it to how you want it. If you hover over a section, hover over the six dots, you can then move the item by dragging and dropping to wherever you'd like. The trash can icon will delete that part of the section in case you don't want something. If you see the add item button, you can click this and it'll add another item in case you need more of them. To get to the other pages to make edits, you can click it in the main menu at the top. Or on the top left, you can select the page. Up at the top, if you need to undo or redo an edit you did, click the undo or redo button. To save changes to edits you've made, click the Save Changes button. If you want to change the color theme of your site, click Themes in the left menu. Click Explore Color Themes and it'll pull up lots of colors and variations to choose from for your site. If you click Fonts, you can change the fonts. If you need to add a new page to your site, click Pages in the left menu. Click New Page. You can then choose a template to go off of or choose a blank start. Click add page to add the page to your site. From this page, you can drag and drop the order of the pages that show in your menu by clicking what you want moved and dragging it up or down. If you click the three dots, you can duplicate that page if you want to use that page as a template for another page you want. You can delete the page or you can click settings to change the name of the page the URL, and if you want to show it in the site menu. If you click SEO, you can change the title, embed a description that will show in search engines for the page. If you click settings over on the left hand side, you can change your site name. Change or upload your logo. Upload a favicon. You can do things related to SEO. And then accessibility, you can choose the language of your site. If you click My Business, you can put in an address you want for your business if you like. If you click Contact, you can put in your contact information in. If you want to showcase business hours, you can input that information. If you click Social Accounts, you can add in social media accounts for your business. If you click Tracking in Analytics, you can add in your Google Analytics tracking ID. If you click Legal, you can create a terms and service page along with a privacy policy and a cookie notification for site visitors if you want to show a cookie notification for users to accept on your site. The HTML injection you can make changes and edits further by HTML code. If you click blog in the side menu, you can add a blog section to your site. By going here after it's set up, you can create a blog post by clicking create new post and then writing and creating your blog post. Up at the top, you can schedule the blog post to be published at a specific time, or I can click the publish button to publish it immediately. The last thing I want to cover is the contact us page. If you click the contact page in the top menu, you'll be on the contact page. 
you'll see the contact form. To edit this, click the settings icon when you hover over it. If you want to add in a different looking contact form, click section in the side menu and click contact form. You'll then have lots of templates to choose from. I'll select this one. It'll now add it to the page. In the form section, hover over it and you'll see the settings icon show up. Click this. You can then toggle what you want to show on the form or toggle off what you don't want to show. If you click form address, you can put in the email address you want all the form submissions to be sent to. If you click success message, you can create an automatic success message to be sent to whoever filled out the form. If you click permission message, you can create a permission message or remove this if you don't want this to show. To move a section of the site in the order when you click on that section, if you hover over the arrow, you can move it down or to wherever you'd like it to go. If you see the up arrow, you can move that section up to where you need it. That is my iPage website builder tutorial on how to build a website with iPage. Give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment letting us know if the tutorial was helpful or not as the comments help improve our tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more iPage hosting tutorial videos.